So I'm just going to pot the red and screw it back up and leave the white more or less where it is and then play the black to come out for the red. That's more or less perfect. So again, just going to pot the black and come off the cushion for this red. And again, like the last shot, when I pot this red, this red will also become available. The only thing you have to guard against when playing this, if that is straight, make sure I'm up this side. Because if I'm low on the red, I then have to pot the red and disturb the others. How did I do? Is that alright? <laughs> a little bit lucky there, it's a little bit short of pace. I said I was hoping to be here, but fortunate enough, I've just enough to pot the red and go through and leave the white here for the black, and I said that red would become available as well. <coughs> so again, I'm going to pot the black, come off the cushion, I was repeating myself, if that's straight, I'd like to be up here on the, on the red. So again, when I put on the red, I'm going naturally towards the black. And again, like the last time, when I put this, re put this red, that red will also become available. So it's a little bit lower on the white ball, just to stun off the cushion. And I'll bring it around here. <coughs> that's more or less perfect. So from where I am in this red, I have a choice. I could play to be here on the black and then come off the cushion with the two reds or I could possibly even come low and play that way. But I'm going to decide to be high because I have much greater margin for error. Whereas if I landed straight on the black, I've got to put the reds in the middle. Or even if I'm a bit too low, I'd have to play a cannon. And of course, even if I'm not absolutely perfect in the black, I would also have the option of the pink. It's so going just a little bit Bottom on the white, and bring me white I'm here for the black. Okay, again, that's more or less perfect. And again, when I put the black to come up, and again, be ideally high on the red. And again, when I put this red, the other red becomes available into both corner pockets. Again, that's, that's okay. The straight was okay. So for where I've landed there, again, I could roll through, roll through for the black, but, but again, I, I could run the risk of landing straight on the black, which would make it a bit more difficult. So in this instance, I'm just going to pot the red and stun the white and keep the white exactly where the red is, and then have a simple pink, and all the balls will be quite close together. So ideally, you're looking for the cue ball to have the least amount of distance to travel. So again, just below center and stop the white where the red is. And more or less perfect there on the pink. So I'll just roll it in. I'll probably be straight on the red. Again, it's a lot easier if you're very close to the object ball for positional play. Again, unless if I was maybe 34 behind and in need of the black, obviously then I'd roll through for the black. But if we say I'm 29 behind and any colour would do me, I'll probably screw back for the blue. Because obviously I'm playing the red, I've even if I'm perfect on the black, I have a long way to pot the black and get close up to the yellow. Ideally, in an ideal world, after potting the last red, I'd like to be on one of the ball colours. So no matter what one I pot, I'm very close to the yellow. I'm straight on the red here. So for this purpose of this one, I'm going to screw back and hopefully leave myself here on the blue. I also have to be careful I get enough power into it because if I leave myself close to the cushion, it makes the blue difficult and I might have to sacrifice the position for the yellow. And of course, if I over-screwed it and came up here, it would be very hard then for the pot the blue and come back up and I might have to pot the yellow. So again, bottom on the white here. Bit of power, hopefully come out and leave yourself on the blue. Okay. 
I think of a little bit of angle there. Again, if I had been, if the white ball had been here for argument's sake, which I intended, I'd be perfect then to put the blue and go towards the yellow. A slight angle here. So I'm going to put the blue with top right hand side. So when I put the blue, hopefully miss the jaw of the pocket. And the bit of right hand side, when it hits the cushion, will bring the white towards the yellow. Again, I'm just going to be, make sure I put the ball and a little bit of top right hand side. And again, with this, if we split the table in two down the middle there, ideally I'd like to be over this side because if I'm this side, I then have to use the rest. So if I'm anywhere over here, it'd be perfect. It's going to top right hand side. Who said don't miss it? That's more or less perfect there. As you can see, by coming over this side, it's made it a lot easier. <coughs> so I don't have to use a cushion here, just bottom on the white, screw back here for the green. I don't have to hit the screw shot as hard as what I did that when I played the last red to come up. So I'm just make sure <coughs> I screw enough, because obviously if I under hit it, I can nearly snooker myself with the brown. Yeah, that's. Uh, stay down. Stay down. No, stay down. Sorry. Trying to confuse me. And again, I've played. I've come far enough on that. So again, this is more or less ideal. Similar to that shot, I don't need to use a cushion. So very similar shot. Bottom of the white, and just hopefully hold here for the for the brown. So ideally, if I'm in an ideal world, if I land it here. It's perfect because then when I pot the brown, I'm naturally going towards the blue. Whereas if I overscrewed it, I have to pot the green, go away, and come back. So again, like the last shot, just a little bit of bottom, not as hard. Maybe keep on back too far. <coughs> Okay, as I said, there would have been perfect. I could put the brown and come off the cushion for the blue. As it is, I'm going to have to play a gentle screw shot and come down here. But I'm not attacking the, the blue in a good angle, as in, I have to come along this path here. So if that's ideal, I could easily land too short or over, or over screw. Whereas if I'm playing it from here, when I put the brown and come off the cushion, I'm all the time rolling towards the blue nicely. So again, bottom of the white, screw. And if I said if here is perfect, it'd be better to be this side, because again, when I pot the blue, I'm going naturally towards the pink. If I over screw it and come too far, again, then I have to pot the blue, go up the table and back towards the pink. It's, sorry, are you hitting center ball? Yes. Yeah. The only time I've played side was on the blue when I needed yeah, a bit no, of just for this Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, no, no side, yeah, just, yeah, just yeah. screw back for about here. absolutely perfect <laughs> again I said I'm perfect here so I could I could obviously roll the blue in and go towards the pink but being a right hander I'm going to screw it and come here because again if I under hit if I wasn't absolutely perfect and the white was a little bit short I then have to use the rest which makes it a little bit more difficult so you might argue <coughs> if I was 17 ahead and just need the blue to win I'd roll it in so I'm making it fractionally more difficult, but uh, on the base of 17 behind, I need them all. So hopefully, bring, put bottom of the white, pot the blue, and ideally come here. And again, that's more or less per perfect there. And you, even if it come on a little bit further, even to here, I could straight, I could roll it in. A little bit further on, I could have come off the cushion. But again, I'm perfect here. So all I have to do is pot the pink, and naturally, the white is just going to come towards the black. And again, that's, that's center ball there. that was center ball again, yeah. And even Ken Doherty for a 147 had pot this. <laughs> 
And again, you might have seen earlier on, I've been playing maybe a lot of side and hitting a lot hard or whacking around the table. But on the basis, this was just to win a match. Just again, <coughs> below bottom or below center striking. And again, just stay down. I won't move my head until the black's in the pocket. <laughs> so, in, in, summing, in summing up, if I did that absolutely perfect, every shot I played there was playing ball. Once I played side, but that's because I was, I was out of position. So I only introduced a little bit of side to get back into perfect position. And again, I'm always like trying to keep the, the white ball as close, maybe even away from the cushions, as close to the object ball as possible. And when I'm playing positional shots, that when I pot, the classic example being the pink, when I pot the pink, I was naturally going towards the black. Likewise with the blue, I was coming down. Because again, if I had have been the wrong side, even from a simple blue, end up the wrong side of the pink. Now, not only have I a much more difficult pot, but I then have to go all the way around. So all the time, I'm trying to keep it as simple as possible and reduce um, only when absolutely necessary use side. So hopefully that was some help to you. Any questions? I think that's <laughs> on the ball with a big head. Like said, <laughs> yeah, it doesn't. There's sort of like a theory that the smaller the tip, it's easier to get um, a backspin or maybe even a little bit more, but it doesn't. I'll just, just give you a demonstration here. Because again, to show you, a lot of people practice the screw shot and the first thing to do is they put it absolutely dead straight. So straight away you're introducing a bad habit. Because if I screw this back, straight away I have to get out of the way for the white coming back. So if you are practicing, have your white a little bit off center. So see the white is going to go here. So again, there's a guide. I'm just putting this other red here. So when I finish the shot, I should have stayed down and the tip of the cue, the tip of the cue should be through there. So I've played it and gone right back. So again, same cue as always. I don't have to do anything extra because I'm playing, playing a screw shot. Just hit the bottom of the white and it'll come back for me. Don't have to force it and come off the cushion here. Again, I've stayed down there and perfect. You can see how far I went, through, I, went, I went right through the ball. Whereas again, if I'd done it initially, when I finished the shot, I'd be up here, so. How come the ball didn't shoot up into the air when you, when you went under it like that? <laughs> well, the, the la when I did that, obviously took my eye off and just miscued, so. Um, as good as I am, I still have to be careful. <laughs> Sorry, uh, quick question. Yeah. When you're starting to practice, yeah. and you want to sort of get your arm going and whatever it is, is there a set routine that you go through? I know you set those up as a practice routine. Yeah. Would that be the normal thing or would you? Fair, probably similar or, I don't know if you've probably seen. you put all the balls in a line? And yeah, all in the middle. Yeah, sort of yeah the, the lineup would be, yes, yeah, so standard. If it was playing, you know, playing before a match and you've got five or 10 minutes warm up, yeah, I'd probably, a, yeah, I'd probably put up, up six, you know, maybe six reds like that. And again, of course, you can, you can have them all the way up the table. So tomorrow, if I'm in the club practicing, the first 20 minutes or so, I'll put all 15 up. And just, I won't even put any great target as such or any particular order. You're just literally warming up, trying to get your confidence up and just getting potted and get, getting your eye in. So just trying to keep it as simple as possible. Now. But then, and as you get into it, then as you get better, you're trying to keep score on your break. So maybe your first time you do it, you might make 20. And then the next time, you're always trying to improve and make progress on it, as, as opposed to just hitting balls, um, hitting balls. I, I have a sort of pr practice regime where, so I put them all around the table, yeah. all the way from the cushions. Yeah, good. I just put the white ball in the middle of the table and have a go. And if I get five and miss one, I set them all back up again. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Yeah, no, that's, 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 per that's perfect. As in, because um, then at least five is your target. So even if your best for the day was 30 or 40, when you come in tomorrow, you know, as, again, as, as opposed to just hitting balls, you're like, right, 40s, my target. Yeah, I don't the go colour red or whatever, I just go one ball at a time. Oh, well, then, yeah, ideal. And then as a warm-up, yeah, that's ideal. All I want to do is just pot, pot in a few balls. And then if you've done that, we'd say once you've cleared the table, then, you know, introduce the colours and then keep an eye on your break. Because again, it's not just a sense of practice and hitting balls. 
every time I do it, even a routine I do is, I might start with six reds, I'll put six reds, six colours, then I'll make it seven, then eight, then nine. So, and the best I've done is I've went from six up to 12. Or there's other routines I've done, even another great routine you can do is put the black off at spot. Again, you'd probably be surprised how much a, a simple work I would even practice. But another practice I do is to start anyway, like with the black, and I have to pot a hundred blacks in a row. <laughs> uh, bearing, in, bearing in mind, and this happened once, once on 99, I got a kick and missed, and I went back to zero and did it again and again. So, the, the, so obviously, uh, as you're starting off, you're developing your skills, but obviously as your skills come on, you're just developing your concentration. So if I've missed on 99, the next time when I got to 80 or 90, bombs could have been going off and it wouldn't have distracted me because I'd put a little element of pressure. It's like having a five foot putt and yeah. saying, right, I have to get five of these in a row. As opposed to just hitting five, and you know, because you're trying to, you're, it's not the same as in a match, but you're trying to recreate and put yourself under a little bit of pressure. So if you knew you to make these five, six footers in a row, and if you don't, you have to go back, and all of a sudden it's getting a little bit late, and you're getting a little bit hungry, there's a little bit of pressure on the last one. So you're just trying to challenge yourself a little piece. Yeah, thank you. And then when you've done 100 blacks, you can go into 100 pinks as well. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Harry, on, on your, on your uh, holding the, the bottom of your right hand, yeah. how how tight are you holding the actual? I mean, are you yeah, no, no, you wouldn't, you wouldn't, obviously you don't want to, we'd say, I got it down here. I'd probably have a, a, maybe a lighter grip, yeah, maybe than some there. of the others, but you don't, you don't want, in a sense like that, too loose. If you can see the gap there, be, the gap there between the cue and my fingers is quite, uh, likewise, you wouldn't want it so tight, so tight, very sick, that the white of your knuckles is shown, because that's straight away, that's a lot of tension there, and even under pressure, that'd be bad. Yeah, it's almost you, you play with the flat partner on top. Yeah. On yeah. No. That, again, that's yeah. That's that's just just preference, even on the cue, or whatever. So ideally, you might have it there on the cue. So what's, there's no gap between the cue and my finger. It's not on very very tight. So just it's nearly not noticeable. And again, it a lot varies on little shots. If you're just playing maybe a little shot, like you're rolling up. If you're sorry, here, like the shot Sean was trying to play earlier. <laughs> if you're playing a little shot like that, obviously you're not going to hold the cue very, 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 very tight. You're just going to have it quite loose. So there, look, I'm barely really hot. It's just leaning resting in my hand. So that's all you're playing. And likewise, if I was playing, say, a deep screw shot, obviously I wouldn't have that same kind of loose grip because I'd have no power. So automatically, I can straight away I can feel myself. If the last time, you see there was a gap, playing that little roll up, there was a gap between the cue and between my thumb and forefinger. Now as I go to play a power, automatically that closes. So again, I need that power. And as I bring the cue back, with it being closed, when I bring the cue back, that's even tightening there. That's effectively where your power is coming from, and then go right through. How many hours would you practice on average day? About six hours a day. Six hours a day. Yeah. I didn't today. I wanted to be well rested. <laughs> <laughs> I'd a big, I'd a big grudge. I'd a big grudge with Rowan. <laughs> I, I need. <laughs> I wanted to go, but normally I'll be playing every day this week, and I'm actually I'll be playing. I'll be down at the club for ten o'clock in the morning. Um. So just as so with with today, I decided to be fresh. So. Okay. Question for you. Um, yeah. You obviously. Great question. Um, <laughs> I always ask one question. Actually. No, that's an excellent question. Um, <laughs> it probably probably comes down to, I said this, well, with the exception of maybe O'Sullivan playing a few left handed. If we take the world number one at the moment, as Mark Selby or Neil Robertson's also playing. I said, you're, you're right, they're not playing any shots for argument's sake that I can't play or other fellas. So it probably, come in, probably comes down to the more, maybe the mental side, maybe more, uh, maybe more confidence, more self-belief so it's a bit chicken and egg obviously the more you win the more confidence you get but obviously you need confidence to win in the first <coughs> place so it's probably just that kind of um <coughs> belief would probably be, probably be the main thing 
and the mental side. Well, uh, the mental side and also then the, con the concentration. If, well, no, I probably can answer it better for you. If I don't think m my best is any worse than Neil Robertson or Mark Selby's best, but if I play 10 matches, I'd probably play my best three times out of 10. They probably play their best six or seven out of 10. So they're playing the best more consistently, so they're winning easier, getting more wi wins, getting more confident, confidence, putting more fear in the players. So a fellow ranked 40 playing Neil Robertson is going to be under a lot more pressure starting off than playing Fergal O'Brien, very good sake, who's ranked 20. So you can see a lot of players, when they play the very top players, the lower ranked players, they play top players, they miss shots they wouldn't, but they're basically missing because they're fearful of their opponent. So, um, yeah, it's probably just... Uh, so fear other than lack of concentration? Probably a bit. That, that, that's, uh, fear probably comes into then a, a lack of confidence as well, which can also manifest itself in the concentration. Because, again, the, the level I'm at, as I said, there's not much different than playing. It basically comes down to the concentration. Um, so a lot of the shots you would miss wouldn't be sh shots that you couldn't play. It's just that you can't play, but you've got distracted. Mm -hmm. The best way i describe it is if I'm playing my very best, and the, all the balls were open, I'd play, and I'd be, mentally I'd be red, black, red, black, red, black, and we nearly like at the end of the ma at the end of it, the referee nearly have to tell me, fair stop, it's okay, all the balls are gone. <laughs> your, your, your concentration's been that good. And then you could play the very next day, and I might put the very first red, and I'm thinking, oh, this is nice, I'm on the black here, could go into the pack here, be nice to get a good start, could make a century. Yeah, we, so on, so on, so on. And before you know it, you've missed the black. So on the, on the good days, similar, and your, your best days playing golf, whatever standard you're at, you know, you're, you've just at least probably played one shot at a time. You've stayed in the moment, stayed in the present. You haven't been thinking after three, the, you part of the first three holes, God, if I keep going, I could shoot 72 or whatever it is. You've just been playing. And as a result, then it's only when you finish, you check your scorecard and you go, God, that was a 79, that was fantastic. Where'd you been out to shoot, shoot a 79? It's a lot more difficult. You're a lot putting pressure, so it's the, the very similar thing. You're concentrating one shot at a time, and the process, and just get busy concentrating, playing the game. But that's obviously easier said than done. And again, the top players are doing it more often under pressure on the big stage. Then it's back to the basics. How do you got your head steady? But it's the biggest fault in uh, high-end. Yeah. There must be a system. Yeah. The, well, it, it co just comes down to practice, and that. From, from an early age, I was taught, you know, taught the importance of staying down on the shot. And the result, that's all I ever, I all ever How did. Do you do that? Okay, here's a perfect example here. I'm going to roll the black in. And as, well, I'll do it naturally now because I'm trained for so long. But as a practice, I'm going to play the black slowly. But I won't move my head until the black goes into the pocket. So even though it's... Uh, so even though I'm... Slightly more angle. So look, I know even though I know the black has gone in the pocket, I'll stay down. Again, so I'll use that other, like I did the last shot with the screw shot. <coughs> I'm going to use that. So again, even though I know I'm going to put the black and it's in, I'm going to stay down until it's in the pocket. Stay down, stay down. I've totally completed the shot. So again, you can see when I finish the shot. My tip was through here, whereas th so that was the, if that was the perfect shot I played, brought it back and went right through. If you lift your head, so look, 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 look at my cue is spinning. Look, we yeah, but, <laughs> but, exactly, but, but, but I've done it as well, but look where my cue is finished. It's up in the air pointing, God only knows. Alex Higgins, he's very well on. Will you? Well, <laughs> he was a bit special, but he probably he went through and then brought it up. So straight away, I say to most players, overnight you could probably improve your game 10%, maybe 20, if you stay down on all the, all the shots. Well, let's stay down on this. Just exaggerate. That, that's it, yeah. It's just, like, it, it's just like a drill. So I said, as soon as I hit that black, as soon as the black got to here, I knew it was in. So normally people might get up because I know a pot. If you miss the pocket, if you miss the ball, they still keep watching the ball. <coughs> yeah, yeah, no, whether it goes in or whether it goes in or not, there would have been shots I've played, might have been playing a red from here up into the corner pocket. And I knew I knew it I knew I had missed it, it wasn't going in, but I'd still stay down. So what's keeping you down? 
Six, six hours a day for 30 years. When, no, when, when it, yeah, exactly, when, no, 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 it's good. When I'm, again, playing that shot, because that's another question people always ask, is that when, you, when you're playing, when I come to, because obviously you'd be queuing back and forth, and then when I bring the cue back and I'm about to hit it, my eyes are on the object ball, and again, not just the object ball, the exact point I need to hit on the object ball. So if we use this shot as an example, so I've lined it up, so I've picked out the point I need to hit on the red. For the purpose of this, I'm going to hit below centre on the white. So again, I've picked out my point, and as I go to play it, the eyes are on the object ball, bring the cue back, pause, eyes are on the object ball, and when it goes in or not, doesn't matter. I've, I've stayed right down. So even if, if I knew that was going to, but say I knew as it's travelling I've missed it, I wouldn't even be aware. It's that, I do it that often, I'm not even aware I'm staying down all the time, but that's just too constant practice. So, so I'd, rather, I'd rather, if you're practising, I'd rather you miss the pot and stay down than get the pot and get up, because over time you'd be more consistent if you stay down. You don't, uh, you don't show up to queue every time you take a shot. Well, that's probably just more tonight because you're playing a bit quicker, but, but you probably, probably you normally would, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry, yeah. The, the process between hitting the white and hitting the object ball, yeah. um, how often do you, so when you go down to take a shot, how often do you, hit, do you look at the white and then the object ball when you're taking it, say, a, a longer shot? I, I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. You're probably, you're probably, uh, as I said. So you, you flicker between. Yeah, both. yeah, exactly. Yeah, but w which is grand, and some may, some might do it more than less. But the crucial point is, again, using that shot as an example. So if we start off here, before you play, yeah, I sort of pick my point on the red. But I also know what point I've picked on the white. You have to set yourself up for the white anyway. Yeah, exactly, <coughs> exactly. So if you, if I was down on this shot and you said. Now, actually, I wanted to play with top right-hand side. Well, I'd have to get right back up, and then, you know, there'd be no moving the cue across. So then, once I've just, I know I'm hitting bottom of the white. Okay. We've established that. And I, as I said, I've picked out the point on the red. So then, as I get down to it, so I've lined up, you know, the cue is going on that line I've picked. So the cue is starting off straight. And as you're playing it, yeah, your, your eyes are probably maybe flickering back and forth. It doesn't really matter. What is crucial is the piece I'm going to show you, show you here. So it's back and forth. And cue back and get to here. Pause. My eyes are on the object ball. Okay. So you can do whatever you like. When you bring the cue back and you go to play, the eyes are... Two seconds are on the object ball. Yeah. When you, br when you bring, the cue, bring the cue back, object ball. As opposed to... Because you can imagine... Because I know some people talk about... Or they try and hit the white, but you can imagine if I'm trying to pot that that red, we'd say cut it back into the middle pocket. And okay, we've picked that point. As I'm looking at the white, sure, I'm blind. I, the red could be anywhere, you know. So, so where you're looking at isn't overly important. Everybody's slightly different. That's okay. But the last second, as you go to strike the ball, you know, it's like saying if you have your putt, you know, your eyes are where it's on the ball or the hole or wherever. It is. 